what I'm planning on doing to start off with is um, some little practice with um, with these washes because obviously once we get into um, actually applying paint to the cat itself, we can't really fiddle with it too much. Otherwise, you'll just wreck it. It'll just become overworked and it'll, it'll be really, really heavy. So um, what I've done just to preempt, as I said in the email, I've just done two quick little sketches um, of the two cats that we, I sent out the reference of, and they're not very accurate. It's just really mainly the faces. Um, obviously, if you want to make sure that you've got the eyes roughly in the right place and the ears roughly in the right place. The bodies themselves, they're going to be fairly loose, so you don't need to worry too much about those, but just as long as the shape's roughly right. And we're going to work on those in a bit once we've done a little bit of wash practice. Okay, so has anybody not done that or do they need time to do that? <clears throat> I haven't done it. I've only done one. Just done practice first of all, because it is, it is a pretty much a you can't play with it situation. So what I would like <laughs> to have is um, some, some old, you know, these are just sort of cut up backs of bits of watercolor paper that I'm um, just reusing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna start off with some very, very basic stuff i.e. can we get enough quantity of paint on there and how can we manipulate it? So that's going to be the first little wash. And then from there, we're going to then do some very, very rough shapes and then try and control the paint um, within the shape, okay? So that's what I'm intending to do for the first section. So has anybody got any questions on that before we get started? <clears throat> no, good, okay. So I'm going to mute the mics then as usual. Uh, hopefully that's lined up, I think, roughly. So then, the first thing I'm going to do, which is pretty much just a warm up really, more than anything, is um, I'm gonna do a little shape with some water. So up in this sort of this top left-hand um, corner, I'm not gonna use the whole sheet so I can do a bit more, um, I should spin it that way. So I could do a little bit more on the right-hand side, is I'm just gonna do a couple of little shapes with water. Doesn't really matter what shapes you, you, you do, but you know, if you want to try and um, make them similar patterns to what's on the cat, then by all means do so. But just a couple of them separated by dry paper. Okay, so a couple of shapes on the on the paper, but separated between them with dry paper. That's the important thing. So don't link the two shapes together. Have one shape, then a second shape. And then let's maybe have a third shape down the bottom here, just with water. Which cat are you doing, Stuart? I can't see. I'm not doing any cat at the moment. Oh. I'm just we're just doing some practice washes first. I see. Okay. Okay, just to um, just to warm up. All right. So now into these shapes, what we're going to do is just spread that out a little bit, so I don't want them to collect too much at the bottom. So I'm just tipping it so that the water is a bit more evenly spread. And then I'm gonna lay my board flat because I don't want it too tilted. Otherwise the water collects at the bottom edge and I don't really want that at the moment. So the first thing then is I'm gonna pick up some, um, let's go with some black, really neat. Okay, so it's, it's, it's neat black, very, very little water in it. Or you can just use Payne's Gray if you don't have black. And what I want you to do is not at the edge of that piece of shape that you've done, but inside the edge, you're going to drop that colour in like so and you're just going to give it room to spread. So there's one. Let's do a second one. So you need plenty of paint on your brush for this otherwise there won't be enough paint in the in the in what you put down to spread. Okay see how it's kind of spreading. So then we'll do a third one. Like so. Okay. So you want to give that time to be able to move and I mean you can tip it if you want to to get the paint to sort of um, do more interesting things so where it starts to split on the edge there because it's got more water to kind of move into so that we get some interesting edges to those pieces of colour rather than just being big blobs of colour you want them to be fairly fairly broken on the edges um, and interesting. All right, so I'm going to let that just settle for the moment. Get some tissue. 
So while that's settling, on the right hand side here, we're going to do another shape. And we're going to come back to these. So on this right hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shape. So say, for example, like a circle or a circleish shape. So it's got a dry bit in the middle and the outside is wet. OK, so it's dry in the middle. Outside is wet. So something like. Something like that. And then same again, I'm going to take my neat paint. So nice and strong and then into the middle. I'm going to fill with that color. Try not to touch the water just yet if you can. So try and look at the paper from an angle to see where it's wet. So we get the paint to come all the way around. And then as we get closer and closer to the wet part and you hit it, you'll see it will just start to bleed into that water. And then it will just separate like so. OK, so that's the second exercise. Have a go at that one. Coming back to this first one. All I'm going to do is just take a. Damp brush. Which have a little bit of water in it, not too much. And then I'm just going to start to link. These two shapes together. A little bit. So we link that one. And then I'm going to link. We'll start to link. A bit more water. These two shapes. Together. Like so. Perhaps we'll come around on the top of that one. OK, so you should end up with something not exactly like that, but obviously something akin to you've got strong paint and then some very, very soft, soft pieces of um, of color. OK, and let's just leave that one alone now. So as I said, you can't really play with these patches of color once they're down. Um, if you do start playing with them, then you'll wreck. You'll absolutely wreck it. Um, I'll just soften that edge off. OK. So let's put that one to one side for the moment. So I leave that one at the top. Hopefully you can still see that. Yep. So I'm going to get another another sheet. So what we're going to do now is a similar exercise, but this time we're going to, instead of just using water, we're actually going to introduce a second color into the um, into the area. So let's do that first part then. So we did some shapes on the left here. So again, I'm just going to put some paint uh, water down. Just a couple of shapes. Don't have to be too precise. Try and get them so that the water spread out quite evenly. <clears throat> okay. And then take my dark color again. So still try and use it pretty neat. And then again, I'm going to drop that into the shape. Or shapes, I should say. Okay. Washing off my brush. Okay, and then we'll do the circle one again. So leaving a dry patch in the middle. So a nice, nice round circle. Take your colour, 
and the same thing so you don't want to touch the water until you've got the majority of the shape in so you're putting down your paint nice and strong obviously the thicker you put it down the um the more bleed you're going to get eventually when you hit the uh the edge so again we take it right to the edge run it round take it right into the moisture okay and then we'll let that one settle now coming back to the first two uh, sorry the first um exercise so instead of just using um, the damp brush to manipulate the edge, I'm going to use some colour now. For this time, I'm going to take some thin, fairly thin burnt sienna. So it's just burnt sienna with water mixed in with it. There we go. So in my brush. So now I'm going to actually bring this and use this to hit the edges of those shapes. Again, a bit more of that color. I'm hitting the edges of all those patches of paint that we just put on, like so. But then you'll get a mixture of the two, the two colors. And then let's do the same around my um, circle. So I'm going to drop this around the circle. A bit more actually. And then just leave that to mix. Tip that a little bit. So, because the second wash, which you'll see in a second, has got more water in it than the first um, pieces of paint that I put down, what should happen, and what's sort of happening on the edge of that circle in here, is that the water will encroach on the area that's got the thicker paint and start to give you a cauliflower or a cauliflowered edge. Um, which normally we don't want, but obviously with this particular um, subject we do want. So um, it's just a little bit of practice to actually try and control that in some way. <clears throat> okay, so um, that's really all I wanted to do in terms of the, um, the wash practice to start off with. Quick, quick sketch and um, a little practice of what we're going to do before we actually get into doing the main, um, the actual main paintings. So I'm just going to do a very, very quick sketch of the, um, the actual painted cat, not the ones, not the photo ones, but the actual um, painting that I sent out. So let's just do a round thing here for the head. Then we've got this sort of oblong shape as a tail kind of comes up his back again and then I've got an ear somewhere there a bit, bit bigger another ear up there I'm not too worried about the drawing I just want to get a shape in and then we've got a face and then we've got some eyes And then there's a sort of a nose and a mouth sort of there. Okay, so that'll do. So then now it's about how do we control the um, the paint within these within these shapes. So the head um, is obviously where the main focal point of the um, kind of of the painting normally is. So we're gonna have to paint the head a little bit more controlled than we paint the body. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, just put a bit of a bit of moisture 
up in here. Now, I don't want to take too long on this particular one. This is just a little practice. So I'm um, going to kind of not spend too long on finessing any of the detail. It's just really a, this is kind of what we're going to do type situation. So there's a patch of water there. And then I'm going to have a patch of water similar to what we've just been doing on the um, on the practice paper. So then we've got another little patch of water there. So then I'm going to take a bit of my um, grey colour. So the lighter version of it first, not the full strength dark stuff. And I'm going to drop, start to drop this in. As we would if we were just painting, you know, a normal, kind of a normal painting really. It's just, just um, fairly usual way we do watercolours. So let's go around the eye, a little bit just through there on the eye, coming down to this eye, kind of like so. Then I'm going to take some very watery burnt sienna. So it's very watery. And I'm going to run that, so it's almost like dishwater, run that into this central area. And then just take some neat water and just blot that off as we go over the nose, come round the side of his head, up towards his ear. So I'll take a little bit more of the burnt sienna, slightly stronger, drop that in here and there. Okay, so a little bit more there perhaps. So that's kind of the top of my head done. So now what I'm gonna do is wash some of that out. So I'm just gonna take a big brush, clean water. And this has just got water in it now, this brush. So I'm running it. So here's the, sh here's the back of my cat here. So I'm running the water inside the shape. So I don't wanna go outside the shape. So I wanna try and keep it in the shape of the, you know, what we're trying to paint. So just taking the water and I'm just going to run some through there just so we don't get a water line. And then run a little bit across there and a nose, just so I don't get too many water marks. Down his body, over his back, and then I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to fill the whole shape in. That's enough for the moment. I've got a big hair there. It doesn't want to come off. <clears throat> Lay it a bit flatter. Soak up a little bit of this moisture. Now, brush. And what we're we going for, black paint. So the same dark colours we just used. See, so yeah, it's a bit too wet. Let's just block that off a little bit more. Not quite that wet. Okay, so thinking this is coming round his back. So now, <coughs> excuse me, this will then form the shape coming through there. I'll just leave that to just split a little bit. Probably could have done that with a bigger brush actually, but never mind. Um, then moving on. So we leave that one alone, don't play with it. Going to come down a little bit lower so remember you know how we did on the practice paper we're going to leave a dry patch now so this is going to stay dry and then i'm going to start my wet patch again now here so coming through goes around the back of the cat up its back clean water ideally the hair is coming out of this brush so here's shape number number two. So remember, this is where we've got a dry patch in here. And we'll actually bring that shape down his back a little bit. Back to my dark brush. Into the dark paint. And here we go. We'll just splodge. Let's tip that a little bit more. Again, it's got a bit too wet in the middle of the bottom there. Don't really want all that moisture at the bottom. So 
this should spread quite nicely now. So dropping it in to the cap here somewhere. So there's one shape and then also a bit down its down its back. Okay, shape number three. So the big shape at the bottom. Again, I'm not going to link that just yet to that piece of colour that I've just put on. I'm keeping it separate. Same trick, darks. Drop it in. Okay. And then there's two smaller shapes oops that's just linked those two together that was a shame never mind and there's another one on the tail here and there's a tiny little bit up there let me just quickly pop, pop those in let's be blotted off a little bit it's too wet let's drop a bit in here a bit in here and a bit in there. Okay, now, like we did with the earlier exercise, take some watery burnt sienna. So it's a mix that's got burnt sienna in it, but plenty of water. Big brush. So now I'm just going to run this in to some of these areas. So down its back, into the edge of that piece. Can actually run it down its front there, up. Down his back here, down his back there, in towards the tail. Okay, now, got some edges here now, so we need to take care of those. So I'm just gonna take a damp brush, just quickly run that round. Might even put some water in it so it's not quite so damp. So I'm introducing a little bit more water to get a bit more of that cauliflowering effect. So a bit more water down here between the two shapes. Perhaps a little bit more water down here. There. I'm going to run some water all the way around the bottom edge just to tidy that up a touch, like so. Okay, and obviously, then we would need to let all of that dry and then we could detail up the face a little bit. Paint this in a similar style to what we've just been doing. So, even though we're working from a photo reference, so there's a lot more detail in the reference than we probably need. Um, we're going to try and simplify and reduce it down to just some more uh, basic washes. So I'll give you a few more moments on, on that little exercise and then we'll make a start. Right, so that comes down. We're coming around this ear, up the back side of this ear. Coming down the back of his neck. We could bring that wash around, say, over his eye, down the back of the eye, into his cheek. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white perhaps in there. We've got some lovely, very, very dark spots around the eye, which we'll work into. Something like that. Perhaps bring the wash down a little bit lower.
and then we're into the neck, which is going to come sort of round and up. A little bit more water over the forehead. Okay, so let's drop some colour into that. So just the standard greys, so fairly watery. So it's just black, or if you want to use just Payne's greys, Payne's grey, whichever, it doesn't really matter. It's just a personal preference. It just needs to be a dark colour. So I'm just going to drop this now into my or into the cat's ear and then we've got a very soft bit that goes up there go around the eye dome that over a little bit more comes around the back <clears throat> down down the back of his neck and then down into the body. And as I said, we don't want to be too fiddly. So just coming around the eye here. And then there's the cheek. And then we've actually got a little bit of tone, just a tiny light bit on the nose. So I'm just going to put that in. Just there. Okay, that's enough there. Right now, let's finesse the edge of that. So just taking a brush with a bit of water in it so that we get a bit of cauliflower in, which is normally what we don't want, but for today we do want it. I'm just gonna run that into some of these areas, particularly where the ear is here. I don't want a hard edge there. So I'm just tipping the board up away from me a little bit just dropping some water into that edge. Maybe we'll just soften that off as well there. A little bit more colour. Forgot to put a bit of grey into the ear here. Drop that in. Okay, and then I need a bit more water. Coming in here, I don't want that too solid. <clears throat> Down under the neck. Okay, so let's tip that back towards me. Big brush. Uh, in fact, no, let's do the um, brownie colours first. So dipping into some watery burnt sienna. So the same as what we did last time, I'm going to drop some of that in. We'll have some of that in the ear. I need a little bit of white in the ear. Perhaps a little bit in the in this ear. Don't like that edge there, so let's get rid of that. Some warmer browns on here. Just a tiny bit on the edge of the eye. Some on the cheek. Don't really want to take that too far. It's going to get too fiddly, so that's probably enough. Just dropping in some water into those, just to soften them off. Just a bit of water, clean water. Now, big brush, clean water. So I've got a lot of collected moisture down here. So now I'm going to come from under the chin in a sort of a rounded fashion because his body is sort of twisted up and around. So I'm adding the paint or the water, I should say. Not that it makes much difference, but it does kind of curve it in the right direction. 
So coming all the way around and then maybe we'll come down his leg. Down his leg there. In this sort of grey kind of colour. So dipping into my greys. Maybe slightly darker this time. Only a little bit darker, not too dark. And then we'll drop this coming from his back of the neck. We'll let that run down. We'll come from under the chin so that the chin can kind of um, have a little bit, you know, of dark against light going on. So again, we'll let that run, run down. A bit darker again now in the wash. A bit more water, I think. Then I'm going to go a bit darker again now here. And then that's fine. So we'll let that just mix. It's a bit darker on this edge. Coming down the leg. We'll let that bleed all the way down to his paws, which are going to be there somewhere. And then we're just going to wash all of that out. Just with water. And let's wash out all of this edge to give me a nice soft edge. Just plenty of water there. Bit more water through here just to soften that all off. Just a teeny bit in there. Okay, now while that's still got some moisture in the paper, I'm going to add a few more darker bits now. So dipping into some neat blacks. So some nice strong darks. Actually, let's go with a smaller brush to start off with. So blacks with a small brush. And I'm going to drop this into the eye area. It's going to bleed out a bit, but hopefully because the eye is dry, I should be able to get that, that curvature. Hopefully it won't bleed too far. It might bleed a little bit, but that's okay. That's fine. I can live with that. And then this is going to come this way. We can let that bleed in there. And then we've got a little dot there. And then there's a little bit of dark right on the end of the nose there. And then we've got some nice, really strong tabby patches. So we can actually get a bit of that in here. More dark. Might use my rigger actually for this. <clears throat> it's a very neat paint. So we've got some very nice strong darks there. There's a few little dots here and there. And we've got a line that sort of comes down under his chin. There's a bit of a dark a bit up there. And then into the body itself, we've got some nice dark bits of fur. Get some of those in. While we can. Bring a bit of that 
up from under the chin. Okay, now before I go too far with that, I'm just going to take some water, just a pipette with some water in it, or you can just use a um, paintbrush with water if you'd rather. I'm going to drop a little bit of moisture just into some of these areas to get a bit more movement on the edge of some of these bits of paint. Perhaps a bit there, perhaps we'll have a little bit of cauliflowering going on through here. Just to add to the furry effect. Um, right now, back to my greys. So the diluter, the more diluted colour. Going to bring that or some of that colour through there, just to give me a bit more body. There uh, we've got a bit more tone in the leg, a bit more tone in this leg, just to make it look like he's standing on something or that he's got some legs even. Let's get darker again. Now, running out of water now, so I need to put more water on the painting. So let's re-wet this. Coming down, down, and then I can finish this wash off down into the tail, all the way away, and it disappears off the paper. Okay, so let's bring the gray first. So we'll have some greys coming down his back. A little bit. So trying to use the, um, the shape of those fur patches just to give some direction to his body. Almost like you would if it was like a leopard or something to make it um, show the form. There's some patches coming down in there, like so, it kind of comes down. In actual fact, I might vignette this one a little bit and just let it all bleed away into the tail, I think. Take some of that really dark black. Let's get some dark, dark patches in here. Perhaps on his leg. Nice bit of dark. A few of those sort of patterns, a bit on his paws, a few little doodads down there. And then we're not really sure what goes on down here. We're just going to give it some, some of that. Okay. Just going to let that mingle for the moment and I'm just going to sort out around his face and just soften this a teeny bit. It's a bit harsh. Just in there, perhaps just across there as well. Just a teeny bit, that's enough. And then we need some of the browns now. So some burnt sienna, just a few flecks of this. So I'm going to drop in and make this a bit warmer than what, what we've actually got. So a few spots here and there. Just to make it actually a tabby cat rather than just a stripy cat. under the chin a little bit. <clears throat> Down into the leg. 
this leg. Perhaps a tiny bit down in the tail. Okay, that's enough. Uh, pick up some of the um, burnt sienna. In fact, he's got a yellow eye, so I'm going to go with give a little bit of yellow um, into the eye. Plenty of water. Don't want it too dark. I'm going to do this on dry and then I'll soften the edges off. So let's just pop a bit of this yellow into the eye. Now, obviously, mine's all, my painting's all dried off now. So, um, there's no chance of it kind of bleeding, bleeding into the surrounding um, kind of washes that we've put on already. Let that dry and then I will um, detail that up a little bit more. So then back to my rigger. And now I need to put a bit more tone into this ear. I need to get a little bit of drawing around this ear. Um, and then like some of you, I need to put a few more slightly darker washes into the body. And um, yeah, so we'll do that next. So first thing is to re-wet some of this. So I'm gonna re-wet um, this ear, oops, just with some clean water again, like we did at the beginning. But I'm gonna do it over some slightly smaller areas now and then progress the wash so that I can control it a bit more. Diving into my, um, my very, very dark, dark so a bit of black drop this into into this here it kind of comes down and disappears behind behind that side sort of comes around down his forehead a little bit I don't want to get too fiddly just a bit stronger in that ear and then we've got a few bits of uh, into this ear. Now we're getting a little bit fiddly, so I try and refrain from that. Just give me a stronger line down the back of the ear there. Okay, and then I'm just going to soften off that wash or the bottom of this wash into the head. Take a bit more of my grey. Add a few more slightly grayer bits of color, just to suggest that this is the side of his head. Just darken it up a little bit more. Perhaps a little bit there, not too much. Soften those off. Few little whisker spots just with some dark um fairly dark color so we've got some little spots that kind of come back from the nose <clears throat> try and keep them reasonably small Just one more there. Just a few little, looks like a little bit of a smile going on, so I'll do that. Okay, now some dark marks into the body. Take some clean water again, and I'm going to re wet his back coming down into the leg. Putting a bit of moisture back in here, into his haunches, and then we've got the tail which kind of wiggles its way down and away. And then I'm going to drop some nice strong darks into that. Tip the board reasonably flat, so then 
coming out of the leg. Up. Goes back. Strong marks in here. Two marks there. Oops, that's on dry. Let's give that a quick swish of water so it's not too solid. Okay, now that's probably enough dark on there. So what I'm going to quickly do is just dry his eye off so I can just detail that up a little bit more. So then the eye itself, I'm going to take some of my brown, just the burnt sienna we've been using, put a little bit of a little bit of black into it, just to make it slightly darker grey brown. And then over the top of the eye ridge, so this is the, the eye ridge here. Going to just introduce a little bit of this darker brown colour to suggest that the the um, the eye fold, which is kind of the fur bit over the top, is casting a little bit of a shadow in the um, into the the glassier part of the eye. So we'll just bring a little bit of that around the front as well. And then just tickle that away down the side there. Keep it soft on the edge. Lift a little bit of that out. Okay, and then I can dry that off. And then we can put our little dark bit in the eye. So we just go back to our blacky colours. Just make sure it's dry. So there's a little um, sliver or slit, whatever you want to call it, just in the centre of the eye. So we just pop that in. Just in there. Now dry that off and then I'll put a little highlight on it. And then I'm going to take some some white watercolour. Just going to dip into a tiny bit of that. Just a nice clean bit of white. We've got a little highlight just on the eye. Just about there. Just adds a bit of sparkle. 
And then just to finish off detailing around the eye, I'm going to take some yellow ochre. Uh, yep, a little bit of yellow ochre. And again, using it fairly, fairly neat. Just going to shape up the underside of the eye because it needs to be a little bit more, slightly more yellowy. Kind of comes up. And then down. And I'm actually going to lose that little white spot there as well. I don't need that. Okay. And then I'll use Okay, and then we just need a few little whiskers and then this one's done. And if we've got time, and if we have got time, we can make a start on the other one or we can leave that one till next time, it's up to you. So let's just take some white <clears throat> and then coming out from these little um, dark areas. So I'll wiggle the brush a few times, get it closer, 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 until you get a very fine, wispy, wispy mark. So don't try and do it in one hit. Give yourself a few practice swings, like you're doing golf. Um, you tend to get a better result that way. white just in there. It's actually got some whiskers on the far side as well. I'll have a few of those just coming out on this left. Oh, that one got a bit big. Never mind. He's actually got some very, very long eyelashes as well. Can't really see those, but never mind. Put a little bit in. Uh, there's a few pinky white bits on the edge of his ear, so I'll just pop a bit of that in. A bit on this ear. A few little hairs. Uh, he's got some. Um, I don't want to get too fiddly, but we'll just put a little bit of lighter colour just into his face there. Perhaps a tiny bit on his nose. Okay, and I think you're going to put him. Are you going to put him standing on anything, Stu? No, I think I'll probably just leave it as it is. Just let it bleed out. Right. No shadow. No, no, you don't need shadow. No, because if you think about it, if you, you kind of crop it down and put a mount around it, you won't see any of that anyway. All right. So I'm not going to bother. I think I'll be fine right. to let it in yet. Okay, so that's that one. So I'm going to wet all of his... Oh, that's not going quite so steep, is that? Wet all of his ear. So I want this one to be a lot looser. That one's starting to get a bit too tight, I think. So let's get this one a bit less fiddly. So we're coming down, and then we're coming down between the nose. I think it's all very, very dark around the eye. A bit more water. Actually, she has got a very dark, pointy face, this one. So we'll just bring that. Just trying to leave the eyes dry, although I've dropped some water into that one, unfortunately, which wasn't very clever. So come down to his little pointy face. 
So something like something like that. It's almost like a triangle, really. Um, and then I'll drop some colour into that. Let's just get some grey. A little bit of brown in there as well. So sort of a browny grey. Flatten it out a bit. Drop this in. the top down the middle it sort of comes out like a triangle as I said if I go around that eye without hitting that little splodge of water that I've put in there there's one eye and then we've got the second eye Coming down, down the centre to his little pointy nose. So there we go. So we'll just let that do its thing. A bit darker on this side. Okay, and then I'm just going to lift out some of this moisture. It's a bit too much water there. Keep it soft. Now into the into his ear, because we've got some nice furry bits. I'm just going to drop, tip the board away from me. Just going to drop a little bit of water just along that edge there and there just to get it to cauliflower a little bit not too much perhaps just a little bit along the top edge as well okay fine leave that alone now into the into its body so kind of coming down now and around so without touching so the the, the bit you've got to be careful of here is not to let not to touch the bit that's already wet. Try and leave a little gap. So, unlike what I've just done there, but never mind. Um, coming down into its body. Making problem. And then we want to come up this side so they all bleed together nice and softly. So coming up the side of his head, down the back. And then it kind of curves its way round into his legs. So you get this sort of S shape. So we'll do that quickly first. A bit of brown into my blacks. Just some burnt sienna. Fairly watery. Starting off at the top. I'm just going to let it run all the way through. Coming underneath his face. Just let the two colours mix and mingle. Under, under, under. The hair is in the way again. So then I'm just going to into the dry. So it's actually dry um, on his back. I'm actually going to let this brush just continue the line all the way down its back to its tail around like so. Okay, and then his tail is actually a lot darker, so I'm going to drop some dark colour, colours, into his tail. Like that. And then take that wash, actually a bit lighter. more water in there. Tipping it away from me now. I'm going to take this wash back up that line. A 
actually we'll bring that into this wash. Let's wash that brush out. And now I need a brush that I can soak up some moisture with. So I'm just knocking all the moisture out of my brush. I'm going to come in here and suck this up. Suck up all that moisture there. Clean the brush off. Oops. And then we'll just come down this front edge and just suck all this moisture up. So I want to keep this fairly light through the middle there. Keep it quite simple. As I said, the other one got a bit fiddly. So I'm just going to take some water and then run it into this edge. Just to get it to cauliflower a little bit. Tipping it away slightly more just to get that, encourage that water to, to um, run upwards. There we go. Perhaps have a little bit of water just on this edge as well. Okay. I'm going to let that just um, dry naturally and then I'll detail the face up. We'll start to detail the face up I should say. <coughs> go into the eyes. I'll go into some cerulean blue. Just neat cerulean blue. Bit of water. Do this onto dry paper. And just drop in the shape of the eyes first. Trying to keep them fairly, fairly correct in, in terms of the shape. There's one, and then the other one. There we go. We'll let that sort itself out. And around the edge of that, it's going to take a bit of dark colour. Uh, I might just dry that first. Uh, I want to let that settle. How wet is it? Mm. Well, we'll go into the face first. So, <clears throat> reasonably dry brush. I have a little bit of um, paint in it. I'm just going to find out where his nose needs to come, which is roughly about there. Roughly about there. So, like in the painting, I'm just going to put like a line and a V for its face, <clears throat> not too much. We can actually get a bit of line up into the ear, just there. Perhaps a little bit more line up in the ear here. With a fairly dry brush I'm doing this. So it's not got too much paint in it. There we go. I'm going to dry those eyes off. <clears throat> Where am I? I just want to see how wet they are. Oh, they might be okay now. We'll take a little bit of the dark browny black colour. So I've got one brush with some moisture in it. Actually, let's put the moisture on first. So just going around the eye with a bit of water. <clears throat> I 
It's dark on the underside as well. Do one eye at a time. Take my dark colour. Darker. Oops, the eye has got a little bit too much moisture in it still, but never mind. Might have to use some gouache to lift that back out at the end. I'm going to go around the eye and then start to come out into the surrounding surrounding area. Pull that these darker colours because <clears throat> his face is actually very dark in the middle here. Just going to get a bit of water to soften this edge off. Back to the smaller brush. Just get the under eye of that side done. More water. Just to work that in. Comes up the face. <clears throat> Bit more dark there. As we come underneath, a bit more moisture down this edge towards its nose. Leave a little bit of light there. Coming down, 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 and then we're into its little uh, muzzly area. Under the mouth up this side. <clears throat> and then we can just soften that off. So soften all this off here. Soften it off a bit on this side. <clears throat> Bring it down. Ears can go darker. So one there, and then we just soften the inside of that. And then same on the other ear. Bit of water just to let that cauliflower a teeny bit. <clears throat> Can even bring that down into his face a little bit there. Okay, and then I need to dry that off. Oops.
and then just to find a little bit of detail. Oops, we're at time as well, so just finish this off very quickly. A little bit of dark, just into his eyes. One there, and one there. And uh, just need a little highlight. Oops, where's my white gone? So just while I'm finishing this off then, so just to remind everybody, this is the, um, the last class of this term. Um, we start again on the, the 6th of January, um, as I said in the email. So um, obviously if you can let me know if you haven't already done so, whether you are intending to, to, to do that. Um, and then um, nearer the time, obviously I'll send out relevant um, information about what we're going to be, what we're going to be doing. Um, there we go, just a couple of whiskers perhaps. So, um, at the point I'd like to wish you all a um, happy Christmas, hopefully you'll all um, be nice and safe. And uh, in the new year we'll um, eventually be able to um, go back to normal classes, hopefully, at some point. But, um, everybody. Happy Christmas to you, yeah. Happy Christmas, Happy Christmas yeah. everybody. Happy Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas, everybody.